Hello and welcome. You're watching Coronavirus Facts vs. Myths. I'm Rishika Barwa. India is now reporting over 40 cases of the Delta Plus variant. Now, this has been called a variant of concern by our government of India. This strain is now in nine countries. Like the Delta variant, the Delta Plus is also considered highly infectious and many could show, uh, you know, resistance perhaps to the existing treatment protocols for COVID in India. Many experts also believe that it could be resistant to the monoclonal antibody treatment in India, which has been touted as a game changer. There are also concerns over the efficacy of vaccines against the Delta Plus variant. Now, let's dive into the details of just how concerned we need to be about this new variant and what really is cost correction that we need to do at this point. Uh, joining us on the Joining us on the broadcast, we have Dr. Rahul Pandit. He's a member of the COVID-19 task force in Maharashtra. He's also the director of critical care at the Fortis Hospitals. Uh, Dr. Pandit, thanks very much for being with us. I want to begin by asking you about the situation in Maharashtra. Maharashtra, so far, uh, according to the government data, has the highest number of Delta Plus uh, cases. Uh, 100 samples were sequenced and uh, we're learning that 21 of those actually tested positive for the Delta Plus variant. How big a cause of concern is this? So Maharashtra has actually been learning the learnings from the second wave. One of the things that Maharashtra implemented was actually to do proactive genome sequencing. And it indeed has shown us that we've actually picked up the Delta Plus variant from the two districts, predominantly Ratnagiri and uh, Jalgao, which is where majority of the cases have come across from. And uh, obviously, it was initially a variant of interest. It is now a variant of concern because we've got, got these cases across three states currently, and around 40 odd have been reported now. So whenever a new variant of concern comes in, I as a clinician become very, very concerned about it. The more important fact being that uh, I don't know at the moment what is going to be the way in which it is going to present as symptoms. If you remember the second wave, the majority of the patients presented initially with gastrointestinal symptoms, the stomach right. symptoms, some of them had diarrhea, loose motion. And before they could actually come to know that they had COVID-19, they had infected the entire household. So are we going to have an unusual symptom with this new variant is what my concern is. And right. then obviously as a the intensive is the concerns would be that is it more infectious than the than the just the Delta variant, which we now know still still is the predominant variant in Maharashtra and in India. Yes. And is severity of illness going to be more? So I think this clinical mapping of the symptoms and data of these 40 patients is going to be the most important one. From the initial report from Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, I think many of these patients actually did not exhibit uh, severity of illness to the extent of what we would have thought. But I still don't, I still like to know every patient's detail before mm. I can comment on that. Uh, and then, of course, the point which you raised uh, in your introduction, that is it going to be resistant to the newer modalities of treatment like the monoclonal antibody. Yes. Yes. Now, the good thing about monoclonal antibody is that there is a cocktail of antibodies. And I think some of the cocktails which are not available right now may be actually working against it. Uh, but we need to be again sure of that. And those are not introduced in India right now, the, the other monoclonal antibodies which right. I'm talking about. So currently, if you ask me, Rishika ji, the best solution is double mask and take your vaccine whenever it comes to uh, your, okay, whenever it, your number comes to take the vaccine up. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Joyita Basu is also with us, co-founder and director of Doctors Hub. Uh, Dr. Basu is someone, uh, you know, who's been looking at COVID patients. You've been treating COVID patients. How concerned are you about Delta Plus, given the fact uh, that in, in, in Delhi NCR, where you practice, uh, you know, most of the markets, malls, etc. are all open now? Yeah, that is extremely worrying because the Delta Plus uh, variant, it's, it is showing higher transmissibility. That's worrying me. And also, we have not vaccinated our population as yet. What we saw with the Delta variant was you needed two doses of the vaccine for it to be very effective, about 66-70% efficacy with our uh, Covishield vaccine. So at present, our, uh, our uh, population has not been vaccinated. And... Delhi has opened up. I'm, I know Maharashtra has opened up. Yes. And I'm actually shocked that we have not learned anything from the second wave. People are behaving, you know, as if there was no wave at all. They are not masked up. They are not avoiding crowded places. The markets are full. So it's it's definitely it's a point of concern for me. 
Dr. Sarman Singh, the director of AIMS Bhopal, also senior virologist is with us. Dr. Singh, what more is known about the nature uh, of this Delta Plus variant? Uh, you know, you're also joining us uh, from one of the districts where the Delta Plus has actually been found. Bhopal and Shivpuri are two districts in Madhya Pradesh where this has been found. What more do we know about Delta Plus at the moment? I think as uh, the previously uh, the other colleagues, they were saying, this is definitely because as the name indicates, it is a plus. So Delta itself is a highly infectious. And we have seen earlier, we thought that you know, it is only infectious, but not more pathogenic. But we are seeing it is... If not more, it is definitely not less infectious right. and pathogenic than the Delta. So that is there. And, you know, last week also, I, 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 I remember that on your show, I said that, you know, from seven cases, uh, you know, last week we were, we were talking, it will not take much time to become 70 and 700 or 7,000. Yes. So we need to be really, really careful. And I keep on saying and other experts also say that probably we, we are just, our memory is so short-lived we have just, you know, not even two months and we have, we are forgetting like anything. And it, I, I really foresee uh, that probably uh, we might be inviting another, you know, trouble for ourselves. Hmm. Uh, and, and as already said that, you know, we are not vaccinated, uh, even though we, 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 we uh, you know, uh, cracked all the records on Sunday right. of vaccination. But I, I think these, this kind of records, they should be on daily basis. Not on one day you, you vaccinate 85 lakhs and another day only 10 lakh, less than 10 lakh. Okay. So this should be continued at within 100 days. I think we need to vaccinate more than 80 crore people. Yes. Then only we, we can take care of the, this kind of mutants. I want to ask you, uh, Dr. Pandit, one of the big questions now is could Delta plus fuel a third wave? And, uh, you know, several doctors have warned that, you know, a third wave is coming. How soon it comes, of course, depends uh, on a whole host of factors, including how rapidly this Delta Plus is going to spread. Of course, I think this is a, this is a truly a concern that are we actually dealing with the virus, the strain of virus now, which is going to cause the third wave. And if we have to take any learnings from the past, remember, it all started in the Vidarbha area of Maharashtra with few cases of yes. Delta variant. Yes, yes. And no soon that we realized it in a few weeks time, we were actually reeling with cases. So we have to be very, very, uh, you know, ahead of the game now at least. We have to contain these districts. We have to put up a complete, uh, you know, I would not say contain lockdown, but a containment zone there. Vaccinate as much population as you can say, as you can do, as Dr. Saab said very correctly. I think we have to vaccinate within the next one to one to three months as much as we can. It right. might look as an impossible target. But I think whatever best can be done needs to be done in the next two to three months so that we actually bring the brunt of this third wave to down as much as we can. It is, it is a concern that this new variant, we know very little about the transmissibility and infectiousness right now with 40 yes. patients as well. But it looks like it is heading towards a more transmissible state. So we have to be very sure that this is not going to be causing another third wave. We have to nip it in the bud right now itself. Dr. Singh, when uh, uh, when Dr. Pandit says you need to nip it in the butt, you need to make sure that it doesn't spread, what, what do we need to do? What are the measures that we need to put in place? Do we need uh, to put containment measures in place in areas, in districts where Delta Plus is now being identified? What do we need to do? Yeah, very rightly you said that, you know, it has to be multi-pronged approach. One is, of course, the vaccination. Uh, within you know two to three months, we cannot wait for the summer or January, as many of our colleagues and government officials they are saying. It has to be done quickly. Number two, as we know that spread last time we saw that most of uh, the urban population is, if you see comparatively, as compared to rural, the urban people are more vaccinated. So I, I foresee more disaster in the rural area. So therefore, it is very right. very important that you know, gram panchayats and gram sabhas they need to be made aware and all efforts for self-containment of the small, small, uh, you know, you that know, wherever is a, the, that the is a very, very important point, Dr. Singh, that you're raising, that given the fact that the scales are tipped in favor of the urban population when it comes to vaccination, could the Delta Plus therefore fuel a third wave and uh, once again, you know, affect rural areas where the healthcare infrastructure is weaker. So I think that's something that really needs to be taken into consideration. I'm completely out of time on our first discussion. Thank you all very much uh, for joining us. But let's shift our focus and talk about the other interesting development that's taken place. Now,
countries like Canada, Spain, the UAE, several other countries also are now offering the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine as a booster shot to AstraZeneca. So what are these countries doing? If you get AstraZeneca as your first shot, your second shot is of an mRNA vaccine. Russia and China are looking to do this too. They are looking to mix and match other vaccines. Russia, for instance, has also been planning to test the combination of AstraZeneca and the Sputnik vaccine, which would be an interesting development for India to watch out for. Now, experts say that it could potentially lead to a better immune response. It could also logistically solve the problem of vaccine shortage supply. Now, how does this vaccine mixing actually play out? And remember, Canada is the latest country uh, to have introduced it. Let's go across to Dr. Isaac Bogoch, physician, infectious disease scientist, University of Toronto with us. Thanks for speaking with NDTV. Uh, the second dose of AstraZeneca vaccine is no longer recommended in Canada. Instead, it's the Pfizer or Moderna that's been given as a second shot. What more can you tell us about this decision? Yeah, so in Canada, we have a lot of access to three different vaccines, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Moderna. And we were giving out a lot of AstraZeneca as first doses, uh, but because, for several reasons that, that stopped, and now we're giving out Pfizer and Moderna as first doses. One of the reasons is that there's a, you know, the very small, but of course not 0% risk of those blood clotting events with AstraZeneca. And when you factor that with that risk doesn't exist with the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. Plus we have regular steady shipments of Pfizer and Moderna where we don't have that with AstraZeneca. Um, you know, when we put all those pieces together, it just made sense to really prefer uh, Moderna and Pfizer for the first, uh, first dose. Then of course we have a lot of people who have had AstraZeneca who've had a first dose. And the question was, okay, what are we gonna do for second doses? Well, we know that the risk of those blood clotting events is even smaller after the second dose. It might be a range of you know, somewhere between one in 300,000 to one in 600,000. So very, very low risk, but still not 0%. Whereas we don't have that risk with the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. And of course, when you factor in other, other issues, like when you start to see the uh, effectiveness of the mRNA vaccines and AstraZeneca vaccine, against the Delta variant, which of course is circulating in India, putting all those pieces together, uh, Canada has said, you know what, you, you need a second dose. Everyone gets a second dose. We'd prefer it if you got a second dose of a Pfizer or Moderna, right. but still, you can still, most places will still give you a second dose of AstraZeneca as well. But you have the choice now, which is interesting. But what about the side effects? Uh, Dr. Isaac, in Spain, experts have warned of the fact uh, that there could be enhanced side effects with vaccine mixing even in the uk experts have warned of the same thing what are you seeing yeah it's interesting when we look at the available data that some data demonstrates that that could be an issue other data not as much uh, what's interesting is the data that emerged from the united kingdom demonstrates that yeah the side effects may be more uh, intense but they weren't severe enough for example to put anyone in the hospital people just had more frequent and often more intense side effects the fever potential headache potential body aches and pains fatigue but again it, it was still not on the higher end of the spectrum where people ended up in hospital so it might happen it might happen more frequently it might happen more intensely but it's not it's not on the severe end of the spectrum right uh, you know, what we're seeing in terms of a vaccine mixing, and if we put out that graphic of where it's happening, you'll see that it's, it's usually AstraZeneca as the first shot, followed by an mRNA as the booster shot. Can the opposite be done as well? And my second part of this question is, what happens to dosing gap? AstraZeneca, for instance, has a 12-week dosing gap in the UK, 16 weeks in India. We know for the mRNA vaccine, it's a lot shorter. Uh, that's a great point. So for the first part of your question, I'm not quite sure why someone would do an mRNA vaccine like a Pfizer or Moderna followed by an AstraZeneca. It, it could theoretically be done, but I think a lot of the reasons for the mixing and matching would, you know, number one, be to mount a, a very robust immune response. But the reason that, that drove places to do this, for example, the reason that drove Canada to do this was there was, even though the risk of those blood clotting events is rare, keyword rare. And even though those vaccines are, you know, very effective, uh, there, you know, when you have alternative vaccines that don't have that risk of the blood clotting event, uh, you know, it, it often points people towards 
both the safety and the efficacy and, and really appreciating both the safety and the efficacy of those vaccines. So, you know, that we, I don't, uh, that's, so I'm not quite sure why someone would do the reverse, AstraZeneca followed by the mRNA. To your second part of the question, um, we have been separating the first and the second doses initially by four months, but no one really had it separated by four months. And in right. fact, we're starting to give second doses at the eight week mark okay. for people who have had a first dose of AstraZeneca. So they can get their second dose. It could be AstraZeneca. It could be the mRNA vaccine like Pfizer, Moderna, starting at eight weeks after the first dose of AstraZeneca. Okay, so that answers uh, the dosing gap question. The other question that a lot of people now have is, will uh, mixing of vaccines work against the Delta variant or the Delta Plus variant that is being found here uh, in India and is emerging as a variant of concern? So I don't have a ton of data to back up this statement, but when we can extrapolate from existing data from the United Kingdom, this is very, very helpful. We saw from the United Kingdom that the, a single dose of AstraZeneca provides 71% protection or 71% effectiveness in keeping people out of hospital, two doses, 91% of effectiveness in keeping people out of hospital with the Delta variant. When we look at the mRNA vaccines like Pfizer, that was closer to 91% effectiveness after a single dose and up to 96% effectiveness after two doses of Pfizer in keeping people out of hospital with the Delta variant. It's fair to say that AstraZeneca and the mRNA vaccines are both effective in preventing people from getting sick from COVID-19 and landing them in hospital. And I think when you extrapolate from that, mixing and matching the vaccines should also be very effective as well. All right. Well, thanks so much. It is indeed fascinating to see what's, uh, what's going on as far as the mixing of uh, the adenovirus vaccine, the AstraZeneca with the mRNA is concerned. It's a story we're going to continue to keenly track here in India as well. With that, we're going to slip into a very short break. Thanks so much, Dr. Isaac, for joining us. But Dr. Sarman Singh, the director of Ames Bhopal, uh, will be live with us on the other side to answer your questions on the coronavirus vaccine. Stay with us. Welcome back to our special campaign, Vaccinate India, in partnership with Google. We look to answer questions that you may be Googling about the COVID-19 vaccine. Dr. Sarman Singh, Director Ames Bhopal, Senior Virologist, is with us to answer some of those questions. Dr. Singh, I think the biggest question that's emerging now is whether vaccines are effective given the fact that we're hearing about new mutations of the coronavirus. Yeah, I think uh, this is very pertinent question and everybody is having this in mind. Uh, but I would say that, you know, if uh, both the vaccines are taken, I think they should be effective, even though uh, there are some data which is emerging, uh, not fully uh, analyzed because data is coming, but definitely maybe uh, efficacy may be a little compromised. But so far, it is no data, I can say, that it says that it is not effective. So definitely it is effective, maybe less efficacious, but definitely they are, they must be taken. Right. So you're saying that you could potentially still get infected with the new strains and the new mutations of COVID that one is hearing of, but the vaccine yes. will still give you a certain uh, degree of protection. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So that, you know, your hospitalization and maybe fatality rates, uh, they will be less, but maybe a little, you know, uh, more people might get infected. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, speaking of vaccine efficacy, the other important question is how much protection do you have with just one dose, given the fact that there is quite a considerable dosing gap between uh, the two shots of the COVID shield vaccine? So how effective is one dose of the vaccine? If we talk of the COVID shield, it is about 71% single dose. And if we combine uh, two doses, it goes more than 90%. But a very recent data which has come from the uh, co-vaccine, hmm. it is about one dose is only about 35% to 36% and two dose is 77%. Right. That is the data yesterday this was released, DCGI, because so far we were not having the hard data of the two doses. Uh, but uh, yesterday the data indicates that it is uh, 77%. So that is the you know, thing. 
but again the gaps and all these combinations uh, uh, that is also important because earlier this uh, 71% of the covid shield was if we uh, put the gap at 28 days but mm. if it is you know increased this was a uh, little you know as i said up to more than 90% right. so that, that is the reason probably government of india they thought that you no know, 3 months will be better as per the uh, data published in the lancet journal from the uk study right uh, what about vaccine side effects and this is of course a big cause of concern that people have what are the varying uh, kind of side effects that people can get after getting the covid-19 vaccine yeah it depends on the uh, which vaccine but by and large most of the vaccines they have milder effects uh, milder side effects which are usually the fever and uh, the pain and swelling at the site but some people in you know, a moderna and uh, pfizer and other vaccines they are also having itching and you know what we call vaccine arm so you know this this, this uh, allergic reaction and pain remains for you know little a uh, few days right. and some people they are also experiencing some uh, some allergy in mm -hmm. the body so this kind of thing but most of these side effects are mild or moderate but uh, okay. not that severe yeah and 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 how long do the side effects last of this thing hmm this is a question and data is emerging i would again say that there are many people they keep on uh, complaining but sometimes these complaints are also psychological but people are people are saying that you know uh, some ladies they had uh, menstrual disturbances some had allergies uh, up to you know few months later hmm. so this kind of things are coming up uh, but uh, you know uh, this needs to be uh, analyzed and you know peer reviewed that how they are actual seen or there are some other reasons for that yeah all right and uh, you know in terms of treatment of these side effects what do you what do you recommend that people should do when they get these mild side effects the most important thing is that probably they need to they need not to be panic uh, even if there are some because fever also this is you know a very uh, simple you know uh, uh, crocin tablet they can take which will right. take care of not only of your fever but also the pain in the arm if they are having allergy there are anti allergic drugs they should take Okay. and uh, if uh, there are any other issues then obviously they should consult the local doctor yeah all right well thank you so much dr singh for sparing your time and being with us on yeah. ndtv yeah thank you thank you thank you very much.